Hi, this is Abdullah Galal, and in this video, I'm going to continue the demonstration of the standard costing process for purchased items on SAP S4 HANA. So this is part two. In part one, we did a standard cost estimate for our item. And in this part, I'm going to continue with the purchase order, goods receipt, and the material ledger actual costing. So let's start by displaying again the material master data of our item. So MM03191. And the plant is 1110. And in the costing 2 tab, this is what we did until now. So we have a current standard cost estimate of 7 USD per share. Now, the, there is a very important report to check here. So go to accounting one, material price analysis. So this one I'm going to keep open so we can check the impact on the material in the different steps we do in the demo. Now I'm going to create a purchase order for this item. And the purchase order is going to have a different value than our standard cost estimate. So we can see how the difference is posted to our financial entries. And I'm also going to use a shipping condition so we can see how shipping can be added to our purchase orders. So I'm going to go to the transaction slash O ME 21 N to create the purchase order. Now the vendor code is this one, enter. And the purchase organization is this. Purchase group, company code, enter. There is also a very important note. In this demo, I'm going to run the actual costing material ledger process. And this is a month in the process, which means it can only work on a month that is over. So in my case, we are on May now. So I'm going to run the demo in the month of April so I can show you how to run the actual costing process. This is why everything I'm going to post today is going to be on April, not on May. Now, the, the document date, I'm going to keep the same. But when we post the goods receipt, I'm going to post it on the month of April. Now, I'm going to hit enter again. And the material is going to be 191. The plant is 1110. Enter. And then I'm going to put the price. So our standard cost estimate is 7. So I'm going to put a price of 8. Enter. And I'm also going to put a quantity of 100 shares, enter. Then I'm also going to add another condition for shipping. So as you see, we are in the conditions tab. And here we can select multiple conditions. So the one I'm going to use is this one, freight value 1. And the value I'm going to put is 100 for 100 shares, which is 1 USD shipping per share, enter. So now the total cost per share is going to be 9, 9 GBB, which is 8, uh, 8 for the price and then 1 for the shipping. So the total is 9. Now I'm going to save this purchase order and double click here. Copy the number. And now I'm going to post a goods receipt. Now, if we check the material price analysis, it is still if we go to the month of April, not May, now refresh. This one is still zero because we have not done any goods receipt yet. Now I'm going to go back to the purchase order screen and go to the goods receipt transaction, which is MIGO, so slash M, MIGO. And here we have goods receipt for purchase order. So this is the PO number, enter. And then I'm going to receive 100 units and the posting date, I'm going to make it April. So this way I can continue testing the actual costing process. Now I'm going to put the um, storage location as 111A, enter, and then check the document. We have to enter a date of production, okay. So go to detailed data and date of manufacturing here. So let's say 10.05.2019, okay. Or maybe make it 10 of April 2019, more realistic. And then check again. All good. So post. Now I have posted a goods receipt to our item. So let's go back to the material price analysis here. And I'm going to refresh and make sure you are on the correct period. So April 2019. And as you see, now we have receipts. For this purchase order, so we have one goods receipt of 100 units, 700 preliminary value. This is the standard costing value. So our standard cost is 7 multiplied by 100. 
so this is 700 and then we have 200 price difference this is the difference between our actual uh, cost and the standard cost and the actual value is 900 and the actual price is 9 now I'm going to go back to the goods receipt here and I'm going to display the financial entry enter go to document information FI documents then double, double click on this accounting document and here as you see we have one debit inventory trading goods this is our inventory account it has a debit of 700 which is our standard cost so any movement that happens to our inventory account is going to be at standard cost and then we have GRIR of 800 so this is for the price of the, pro of the product that we are paying for the product itself and then we have another freight clearing MM this is another GRIR account but this one for 100 is for the shipping fees and then we have a price difference of 200 so now you see how we can add the shipping cost to our PO and to our inventory valuation is through adding it to the purchase order and then this is the financial entry the price difference includes any difference between the total landed cost which is our price plus our shipping and the standard cost so we have 200 price differences now I'm going to go on and proceed with the uh, period end process for the actual costing of the material ledger and to do this I'm going to go to the material ledger transaction which you can find here let's go back to the menu go to accounting controlling product cost controlling actual costing material ledger actual costing and edit costing run so this is the transaction that you are going to run at the end of every month to close the material ledger so open the transaction so first we have to create a costing run and this is going to be only one run at the end of every month so the costing run I'm going to create under test 110 and then I'm going to put a description as testing cycle for April and the period is going to be 04 and the year is 2019 enter and click on create actual costing run now I'm going to click on OK and then here I'm going to select a plant so the plant I'm using is 1110 here and click on this arrow so as you see we assign a whole plant to the actual costing run you cannot select uh, exact materials so I cannot go and say to SAP to run the actual costing on certain materials but we have to select a whole plant now I'm going to click on save then I'm going to close this window and open the processing one so these are the steps for the material ledger actual costing and it starts with the selection in the selection step SAP is going to check the material master data and is going to select any material that has the price uh, determination set to 3 this field I have already showed you in the previous video then in the preparation is this is a technical step SAP is going to prepare the materials then we have settlement post clearing and the market prices I'm going to run all the steps one by one and we can see the impact on our financial entries and on the material master data now in the selection I'm going to click on parameters here and I'm going to remove background processing background is important if you are running a huge volume of uh, materials so if you have multiple transactions and many materials you can use background processing but since I'm only testing on one and this is the only one I have on the testing system I'm going to remove background processing and then I'm going to click on save back and I'm going to execute so now as you see we have material successful one material and here we have one material selected which is the material we are using for our testing go back now the second step preparation I'm going to go to parameters also and I'm going to remove background processing and save and as you see it gives you a message that you must first allow price determination for period 04 so this is similar to the error we got when we were running the price update in CK24 this is an authorization error which means that someone has to go and approve and authorize that we are ready to close the period and this someone is usually an accounting manager so go back cancel if you see this lock this is the authorization lock so only the person authorized can go uh, can go ahead and remove this lock so I'm going to click here and as you see now it is allowed it's open so only the authorized person can do this 
so now I'm going to go to preparation again, remove background processing, save, go back, and execute. Now, as you see, we have one material successful, so everything is okay. Go back. And then go to settlement, again parameters, I'm going to remove the background processing and I'm going to save and go back. Then I'm going to run settlement. Now before I do this, let's go back to the material price analysis screen. Now this is before we do any uh, material ledger actual costing uh, cycles. As you see here you have period status, you have relevant for settlement and then preparation open, settlement open, and the closing entries open. Now, if I refresh, now you see it is telling me that the preparation is completed. So the status of the actual costing cycle is updated also in the material price analysis. So now I'm going to go back to the actual costing here, and then I'm going to run settlement. And then we have one material successful, go back. Now, if I check again the material price analysis. Now, as you see here, we have not allocated price difference of 200. This is before settlement. Now, once I refresh, it now it is not, it is no longer not allocated. It has been settled to the item. Now, this doesn't seem very important in our case because we are using, uh, we are doing a demo for purchase items. But when we are doing a demo for manufactured items and we have many items consumed and we have raw materials that are consumed in different products, you will see how this has a huge impact. But for now, all you need to know is once you settle, SAP is going to distribute the price differences to the materials. Now here we have only one material, so all the price difference is settled to this material. So now we have 100 units, 700 preliminary value, price difference 200 and the actual value of 900. And also, as you see, it shows settlement completed. And also, you have ending inventory now. So our ending inventory is this. And then you have settlement of 200. So now SAP has understood that we have closed the period. Now, there is also another step that we can run in the actual costing. This step, this is the one that can post financial entries. So until now, there are no financial entries posted. Our inventory account is only showing the value of 700 is not showing 200. The other, the 200 difference is posted in the price difference in PNL. Now, if you would like to actually post a financial entry to move the price difference from the PNL to the balance sheet, to the inventory value, as I explained in the process before, now you have to go do the post closing. So I'm going to authorize the transaction first here. Go to parameters. And here I can tell SAP to revaluate the material and revaluate consumption. So these are two options available. So if I click on evaluate materials, SAP is going to move the price difference from the P&L or the income statement to the inventory account in the balance sheet. If I click on revaluate consumption and we have consumption posted, then SAP can also, re can also move some of the price difference that is related to the consumed items to our cost of goods sold or to our consumption accounts. Now I'm going to keep it as test run and I'm going to save back and execute. Now, as you see, we have one material successful and the status is green. So everything is good. Now I'm going to go back and remove the test run indicator. So we can actually see the financial entries, save, go back. And I'm going to click on post closing. Now, before we do this, I'm going to show you uh, a screen of like an extract of our trial balance so we can see what accounts we have balances in right now and then after posting we can see the impact on our trial balance so to check the trial balance I'm going to go to transaction f.01 and I'm going to run it for our company code financial statement version is this and the period I'm going to make it for 2019 for and the comparison is also for 2019 I'm not willing to compare now so for two four and in special valuations I'm going to make this two so this way I'm telling SAP to show me only the variances that we did by our posting in this period it's not going to show me the whole balance it's only going to show the impact of the transactions posted on April
and then I'm going to click on I'm going to make sure that this is what this one is not checked so I'm not going to see any accounts that have zero changes and I'm going to execute so now as you see here we can see only the accounts that we did posting on on April this is why there are many accounts missing because I'm not seeing any accounts with zero with zero balance or zero changes now uh, as you see we have under assets inventories we have inventory trading goods of 700 so this is the value of our standard cost and then if you go down we also have goods receipt invoice receipt of 800 and another one for 100 which is our 900 liabilities so these will be posted against our vendors and then if you check here in the PNL, you have loss price difference external product of 200. So now we have 200 posted in our income statement for the price difference and 700 posted to our inventory account for our standard cost. Now I'm going to go back and run the post closing step in the actual costing here, execute. And I'm going to refresh our trial balance so we can see the difference here back execute all right now you see that we have an inventory value of 900 so the 200 that were posted to the price difference are now posted to our inventory account and if you go down in the PNL we have loss price difference of 200 and then we have gain price difference of negative 200 so the net balance is zero so now you see this is the impact of running actual costing material ledger and executing the post closing step. Uh, here, as you see, SAP is going to take all the price differences and is going to post it to your inventories and to your consumptions based on what you consumed and what you still have in stock. This concludes our demonstration. So uh, now I have already demonstrated all the steps starting from standard costing, how to run the standard cost, then the difference between actual and the standard and then the material ledger actual costing in the next videos i'm going to start with the standard costing for manufactured items which is the more complicated part but since we understand this now it will be much easier to understand the standard costing for manufactured items thank you for watching hope this was easy and understandable for everyone it took a huge effort to run this cycle on a testing system because it requires a lot of configuration. So hopefully it was useful to you. And please, if you like it, then share, like, and subscribe to the channel. And also don't forget to share your, your knowledge all the time. Thank you for watching. See you next week.